Okay, I had one of my MBA students have a question on this problem. Uh, it's a problem on how to calculate NPV, the net present value of a project. And also, if the project has multiple internal rate of returns, how to look at those and, and kind of interpret what that means. So you can see that these cash flows are very different because this project, you're starting out, you're spending $200. Then you're getting on in year zero, and then in year one, you're getting your investment back of 950 and then year two you have to invest another 850 dollars and you're only getting 75 dollars back okay so that, so you might say well don't even do year two and three but maybe this project requires you to do all of these or don't don't invest this you might say don't invest this 850 just do this part right but the project may require you to do all all the cash flows so um, anyway this problem is like problem three nine in this textbook uh, Principles of Finance with Excel by Simon Beninga and Tal Mufkati. And it's a good book. It's not exactly the same problem, but it's like the problem that I got from this book. Okay, by the way, this is a good book. I highly recommend it if, you, <coughs> if you're interested in modeling uh, financial problems in Excel. There's also several other books by the same author, Simon Beninga. All right, so... First of all, let's do part A. So, of course, the net present value formula, well, that's going to be uh, equals NPV. And the first thing it asks for the rate, which is right here. And then it asks for the cash flows. Now, remember, in net present value, you don't want to use the, the cash flow at time zero. You want to use, it assumes you're starting with the cash flow at year one. And then you have to add back in times zero separately. Okay, so we get a net present value of of uh, of seventeen dollars and fifty one cents. Um, so part B, take or reject. Well, the decision rule is if this is positive, then these cash flows are going to be worth it because you get a positive cash flow when you take these all back to the present value. So I could say, I could actually code this so it gives me the answer automatically. I guess so equals if this is uh, positive, which would be greater than zero. Well, if it's true, I would say uh, take. If it's false, I would say reject. And of course, this says take. So um, I could have typed take in there, right? But uh, it's kind of cool to have Excel figured out for you. All right, so part C, it wants to know the internal rate of return. Now, obviously, this problem is telling you there's two different internal rates of return. So not all problems have two different rates of re internal return, inter internal rates of return, but this problem does, and it's kind of giving you the hint that it does. So normally. I would go equals IRR, and then you do the values. Now, this differs from NPV because I'm, now I'm going to highlight them all, including the one at time zero. And it asks you to guess. Now, if you don't guess, it's going to assume you're guessing zero. So let's just use zero for our first internal rate of return, and we get 5%. Now, remember, whenever you're doing finance and you're solving things on Excel, finance, it does something I don't really like. It rounds percent to, to zero decimal places. You should always take percent answers to at least two decimal places okay so that's that's one of the internal rates of return that this this these cash flows actually have now so we also know there's another one here and the other one I'm gonna go the same thing I go equals RRR and I'm gonna do the values again but now I'm gonna guess something to zero I'm gonna guess a big number so I'm guessing that other internal rate of return is probably very large now, Excel doesn't give you an exact solution. You guess, and it goes from there and tries to find it. So I'm going to use a big number and hope it will zero in on the, on the larger IRR. So I'm going to guess like 1,000%. And sure enough, it gets the higher one. So again, take it out to two places. And so that's our other answer. All right, so for part E... So what is what is the cost what for what cost of capital should we take the project? You say when uh, it's between five 
5.34%, which this is, right? And 259.76%. Okay. Um, okay. So, in other words, we kind of know it's there because 10% is between there, right? So, anywhere between those two numbers, our MPV is going to be positive because we have a positive. I hope that kind of makes sense. I'll do a graph in a second and kind of show you what's going on. And then and then for part, for we're going to say explain, this is where NPV would be positive. Okay. So let's kind of look at what's going on. So we can graph this. We could go, uh, we could make an NPV chart. And we could say the discount rate. And in this problem, they're calling it a cost of capital. Don't let that confuse you. And then the next thing we want is what the NPV is at that discount rate. Let me. Take that out a little bit. Okay. So we're going to do different discounts rates. We'll do 0%, 10%. Now we know we need to go all the way up to above 259%. So we'll take this down. Now Excel got some intelligence built into it. So I'm going to highlight the first two. I'm going to copy this down until maybe... Let's do 280%. Okay. And we want to know the NPV at each one of the cost of capital. So I'm going to go equals NPV. And we're going to do the rate. And this time we're going to use this for the rate. And our values are going to be these three values. And I'm going to F4 of those because I want to make those absolute. I don't want it to move from here as I copy this formula down. Here I didn't F4 because I want it to move. I want it to move to here, to here, to here. These, I always want it to point to this. Now, you could actually, F4 is a quick way to put those dollar signs in front. You could type the dollar signs yourself. Okay. And then we don't want to forget, to outside of NPV, we want to add that original cash flow. Again, we want that to stay there when I copy it down. So I'm going to hit F4. And then I copy this down just simply by double clicking and sending it down. And you can see since that F4, these all stay there, but this moves to A20, A21, A22. But since these are F4, they're always pointing at these up here. Right there, they're always pointing there. All right, so now we want to do, let's graph this. So I'm going to highlight, uh, let me just go ahead and highlight these. And I'm going to go insert. Let me scroll up so I have my graph up here. I'm going to go insert. And we want to insert a scatter plot, and we'll go ahead and do the one like this that shows the lines. So, and then I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the title. We don't really need a title. We know what this is. So this is showing the NPVs on this axis, and it's showing. Uh, so we know that the IRR, the definition of the internal rate of return, is the point where NPV is equal to zero. So we can see that this one is going to be this 5.34%. Now, how could I check it? I could go here. I could go equals 5.34%. Take that out a couple places. And now I'll put that dot right there and where, where the NPV is zero. And down here was around 259. So maybe I could go this one equals whatever we had here. Take this out a couple places. And then what we could do, we could, we could, um, label this. So I'm going to click on this dot here, right click, go add data label, and I'll go at, and I'll go add call out. You can see that the cost of capital is 5.34% and the NPV there is zero. You can do the same thing, click on this one, right click, 
add data label, call out. You can see here also. Okay, so anything between here and here, you can see by this graph, and this is the NPV on this axis, that we have a positive NPV between 5.34 and 259.76. So hopefully that kind of helps. Um, IRR is a little bit hard to understand what's going on when you have multiple IRRs. That doesn't happen very often. Most of the time you're going to you're going to have one negative cash flows. Your negative cash flows at the beginning and eventually they become positive. That's usually going to generate, you know, a one IRR, not multiple IRRs. Multiple IRRs are an unusual case. All right. Hopefully that helps. Thank you.